Hi everyone. In this episode of In the Field, we're going to Mammoth Cave near Bowling Green, Kentucky. I'll talk about some of the challenges of photography inside the cave, as well as some of the other things you can explore in the area. Let's get started. Mammoth Cave National Park is just over a 30 minute drive from Bowling Green, Kentucky. The great thing about this location is it's pretty accessible for anybody living in the eastern half of the U.S. We visited the park in early spring when the flowers were in full bloom. This really added to the already great views. Mammoth Cave National Park is more than just the cave tour. The surrounding areas provide plenty of great hiking and photo opportunities. If you're going to visit the cave itself, especially with photography in mind, there's a couple things you're going to have to consider. First thing is you're going to need a reservation. We made our reservation a couple of months in advance. As of spring 2021, the only tour available is the self-guided variety, which is actually great for those that want to experience the cave at their own pace. You'll find park rangers throughout the cave, offering some great information and a little bit of history along the way. The park does hold back a few day of tickets, but if you're going to want to score one of these, you really need to get to the park really early and get in line. Be prepared to wait, and also be prepared to be disappointed. This will be a recurring theme you see from me throughout any travel videos that I create. I've seen so many disappointed or angry tourists all over the world. One of my all-time favorite quotes that pertains to travel or a lot of life situations comes from paleontologist Bob Carter. It simply says, Poor planning on your part does not necessitate an emergency on mine. If you don't properly plan, there's nobody to blame but yourself. We start planning many of our trips one to two years in advance. By doing your research in advance, you can enjoy the moment when you get there. The second thing you need to know, and this is very relevant given the dark cave environment, is that tripods are not allowed. This is very understandable given the dimly lit paths and the hazard they would cause. This information was shown on the NPS website, so I didn't even try to bring one in. I did, however, try to bring in a monopod. I was quickly informed those weren't allowed either, so I just ran it back to my car. No big deal. Also, any sort of flash is strictly forbidden. This is for the safety of other visitors. Honestly, I wouldn't have used the flash anyways in this situation. This, of course, leads to the age-old problem. You have dim conditions and no support for your camera. Plenty of the features inside the cave are lit with a dim, warm lighting, but nothing super bright. In most situations, you're going to be left with the basic camera trade-offs. Aperture is the easiest and most obvious one here. I kept my lens wide open at f4 the whole time. If you have an even faster lens, like an f2.8, you're going to be in even better shape. Mammoth Cave is huge, so generally you're not going to be shooting things in tight quarters, and depth of field is not going to be a huge issue. Or at least it wasn't for me. Shutter speed is going to be your main enemy here. There's not a lot of places where you could set down your camera or support yourself for a picture. This leaves your last variable of ISO. With my camera, I'm comfortable going up to 3200. In general, my goal was to keep my shutter speed under a quarter second, so I found most of my pictures ranging from 1600 to 3200 ISO. If you have to go higher than that, don't worry. You can try to clean up your photos later or use something like Topaz Denoise AI. Don't be afraid to crank up the ISO if you have to. If it means getting a noisy shot versus no shot at all, just take the shot. You can always delete it later if you don't want it. Once you've finished your cave tour, consider some of the great hiking trails outside of the cave. Most trails are well-traveled and easy to navigate, but not overly crowded. Many trails are a half a mile or a mile, and can be easily combined with other hikes to make it longer if you want to. One of the most accessible hikes is right by the cave entrance. The trail will take you down to the River Styx Spring for a nice view on a wood boardwalk. Besides the spring pool, you might catch some water falling from the rocks above. A few steps away from the spring, you can see the Green River. It won't take long for you to figure out why it got its name here. The banks were quite muddy, so we just took in the view from a bit of a distance. If you go directly back to the visitor center, the trail is quite steep. You've been warned. Another hike I would highly recommend is the trail to the sinkhole. Here you can see a portion of an underground river that was exposed when the ground collapsed. Stairs take you in and out of the sinkhole, and judging by the waterline on the trees, I suspect this area is very prone to flooding. Ask one of the park rangers if this is a concern for you when you're visiting. Finally, if you're looking to get outside the park and want to take in some U.S. history, there's a couple of great sites about an hour away. The first is the Abraham Lincoln Birthplace National Memorial. This was the first Lincoln Memorial. We got here about an hour before park closed, and there were very few visitors. With just a little bit of patience, I was able to get several pictures of the memorial without any visitors in the frame. Inside the building is a replica of the home, and there's a couple of nice hiking trails around the area. One is a nice handicap accessible boardwalk. The second site I'd recommend is the Lincoln Boyhood National Memorial. This one is probably closer to 90 minutes from Bowling Green, and it's a great choice, especially if traveling with kids. Lincoln's first memories would have come from this location. 
The inside of the memorial was closed at the time of our visit, but we were still able to walk through the replica of the homestead. Here you can see sheep, chickens, horses, and cows, and gaze upon the farm fields that would have been used by the family. My bit of advice here is to take your pictures, then put down the camera. Give yourself a moment to take in the scene and reflect on the importance of this spot. Before you leave, take the trail to the small cemetery where Abraham Lincoln's mother was buried. There's lots of other things to do in the Bowling Green area as well, but we only had about a day and a half. It's a beautiful area, and I'd highly recommend it if you ever have the opportunity. Until next time, happy travels. Mm -hmm.